Oh, big man, you guys are about to have a bad day. Too bad I'm just passing through. Hey there, my name is Salandrak, and it's time for episode 5 of the Reign of Giants Wagstaff playthrough. Quick side note before we get started, my YouTube analytics shows that there's a steep drop off of viewers when I get to the conclusion portion of my videos, so I think I'll just stop doing those. Consequently, I'll need to put in a plug at the start of each video to ask that if you enjoy this type of content, to please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so that I can be in the good graces with the YouTube algorithms. Hitting those buttons really won't impact you as a viewer, but I can't understate how much it helps me as a content creator. Now with that out of the way, when we left off last time, we had just created and immediately tested out our hound fighting tooth trap area, but never got a deer clops and have yet to see a moose goose. What will happen today as we march further into spring and towards summer? Let's find out! As day 40 dawns, I'm heading down into the savannah to stock up on more grass as I'm a bit low and have a number of construction projects in mind. I also still need to get that bundling wrap recipe so I head down to the bee fields. I want to keep my vision good so no beekeepers hat and instead I just double up my armor with a visor and log suit and while taking down the killers from a second hive I'm finally rewarded for my efforts. In fact, the bees felt so bad for being stingy before, they give me two recipes, yay? I go ahead and break a few hives as I'll need the honeycomb for bundling wraps and am planning to set up a bee box honey farm. I gather up all the loot, then pick up a little more grass and then teleport back to base. Um, huh. How come Chester didn't come back with me this time? I could have swore he did before. It's almost night, so I'm planning to make a gobbler bait pen for my berry bushes and start crafting fences in the gate, then throw on my infroggles to go get Chester, grabbing more grass along the way. Wow, Spiderweb sure shows up clearly with these things on, that's kind of odd. And soon enough, Chester is hopping towards me, so I slow boat it back to base. I'll have to experiment with that Telebrella a little later. Morning of day 41 arrives and it's time to start building fences. At this point, I realize that I set up my base at an off angle from the way the world started and my fences end up a bit derpy, oh well. It will still keep the gobblers in and that's all that really matters, aesthetics be damned. I then pick one berry and put it into the fenced area. It just turned to dusk though, so picking more berries won't get me any gobblers since they're scared of the dark and will immediately hop into a bush, so I'll have to wait until morning. My next base building project is the bee boxes, but I'll need live regular bees so I make some bug nets. I'll need to be at the hives during the daytime though, so I decide to clear out some more of the spiders from above base, but get way too many and decide against that and instead head down to my thumper as almost all the trees are fully grown. I'm wearing my raincoat to stay dry though instead of a backpack so I can't pick up too much of the wood right now. There's a full moon so I don't need my infroggles while heading down towards the bee fields and soon enough it's day 42 and time to start catching bees. So even though all bees appear red during spring, the worker bees that go out to flowers will turn yellow once caught. So all you have to do is watch for bees out and about and grab them with your bug net. I keep running circles around the area to avoid the killers that chase me and pretty soon have enough bees for three bee boxes and six butterflies for planting flowers and Telebrella back to base. Next up is making bee boxes. I prototype the first one, then gather materials to make a lightning rod. You really don't want a random thunderbolt to burn them all down to ashes. I'm a bit indecisive on where I want to put them. There's a couple of different strategies on whether you keep them close to your base or far away, but I generally go with pretty close to base, but not so close that the red bees are a problem in the spring, and ultimately go with the spot just above my thumper. Three bee boxes go down, then I go ahead and plant the butterflies I currently have. I gather more wood on my way back to base, and then harvest my grass and twigs by the light of the full moon. Then back at base, I go ahead and start making some bundling wraps, and soon enough it's day 43. Ooh, let's see if I can get some gobblers up at the berry patch. Oh, looks like just one victim today. Call me mean, but killing these berry-eating bastards is always very satisfying. I need more flowers for the bee boxes, so I make another bug net and catch a few butterflies. In order to maximize honey production, you need enough flowers around the boxes so that each bee can pollinate at least six flowers before heading back to the hive. But because each hive produces up to four workers and only one bee can be on a flower at a time, you'll need a lot of flowers around the boxes to keep the honey production high. Oh hey, my spectacles are almost dead and I remembered to make new ones before they got broke. Go me! 
Oh, Koala Fin, get back up to your corner. I really need to make a pen for this guy. I'm not sure what I want to make with the old spectacles quite yet, so I just store them in a chest for later. Then I make another bug net as I need more bees for more bee boxes, and then head back down to the bee fields and gather some grass and twigs while I wait for morning to come and then get back to work bagging the bugs. Just before dusk arrives, my bug nets have broken and I've got enough bees for three more boxes and almost a half dozen butterflies as well. Quick teleport back to base, I'm really a fan of that thing and soon enough, I've got a nice arrangement of six bee boxes and a good number of flowers adjacent. I want to get a couple more telebrellas made, so I start picking flowers in other places around my base to make the prerequisite pretty parasols, two of which get made when I get back to base. I go ahead and drop my original telebrella at the Swamp Touchstone, just as the next town attack warning starts. So it's back to the Tooth Trap area, a quick level 4 fire, and I wait for the hounds. My handbad is a little on the spoiled side, but with 15 tooth traps, the hounds go down really fast. Hey, mole worm, don't you be stealing my blue gems. Dawn breaks and I want to make some more tooth traps, but since my inventory is full, I just drop some stuff temporarily on the ground. Three new traps go down, then I gather my stuff and run up to base. Summer is still quite a ways off, but I decide to start making some preparations well ahead of time and start crafting an endothermic fire pit. I then pre-craft a chest and store enough boards for another one in Chester. I typically just put two storage chests at my summer base, which I'm planning to put in the desert up near Maxwell's door. I then pre-craft a crock pot and an ice box, then make up a couple bacon and eggs for a road trip. I'm a little low on gold though, so I make extra eggs that I'll give to the Pig King. I get to the Pig King though just as it turns to night and he's passed out drunk or something, so I just build a campfire and wait for morning while I sip my coffee. Day 46 arrives, I get my 11 gold, and then head up to the nearby mini swamps to gather more reeds. I briefly check in on the pigs vs spiders war zone, then swing by my bee boxes to see how they're doing. Not much honey yet, but they have to be out during the daytime while your character is nearby in order to get good honey production. Otherwise, if they are unloaded by the game due to being too far off screen, they only produce like one honey per day or something. My raincoat is getting a little bit low on durability, so I go ahead and top it up with my sewing kit, then decide to amuse myself fishing up some flotsam that has accumulated in the cove near my base. Most of it's junk though, and even the sextant trinket will only trade for two gold with the pig king. It's almost night, and a lightning bolt ignites a few trees, which reminds me that I need more charcoal for my summer base, so I grab a torch and light a few trees myself. Surprisingly, it's pretty hard to see the burnt trees and charcoal within Froggles on, so there's a good chance I didn't get them all, but head back to base to pre-craft a drying rack and put the excess charcoal and some other materials in Chester. Dawn arrives and I start heading out to the desert to make my summer base, but remember that I had forgotten my telebrellas and then detour over to the bee boxes to give the bees time during the day to work on making some honey, grabbing a little just for fun. Off in the desert, I pick a spot up near Maxwell's door and a herd of volt goats, then proceed placing down structures. A couple of chests go down, followed by a crock pot. I forgot to bring more stones, so I craft a pickaxe and mine some of the local flintless boulders. Soon I have enough for a second crock pot, an ice box goes down in between, and a drying rack off to the side. I probably should have pre-crafted a nice fling of Maddox so I could check its range, but instead I just guesstimate a good placement arrangement so that the main structures will be protected from summer's heat. I then decide to go crazy picking evil flowers, haha. <laughs> the flowers themselves can be refined into shadow fuel, and I want to burn the trees here for more charcoal anyways, so win-win. Soon I've got my first crawling horror, and they are pretty hard to see within Froggles on, which is making me curious as to how well they'll work down in the caves. I also forgot to bring any weapons with me, so I craft a spear, and before I can put wood in the fire pit, almost get ambushed by the shadow creature. And then a terror beak arrives, and they're really hard to see within Froggle Vision. It's almost morning though, so I just run around until dawn arrives, and I can put on my visor and take them out. Terror beaks really aren't any more difficult than the horrors, they just move a little faster and hit a bit harder. Soon the terror beak is gone, but its death boosts my sanity such that I'm no longer crazy enough to keep fighting the crawling horror. Oh well. I run back to base, swinging by the desert touchstone to drop off a telebrella and then grab some cactus which I'll use later to restore my sanity. I'm a bit leery of using the telebrella with Chester around after the experience earlier, so I slow boat it back to base, gathering more grass and twigs along the way. 
But just as I'm getting close to base, frogs start dropping from the sky. I don't want my base to get overrun with frogs though, so I back off the other direction and drop a campfire to cook up and eat some of my cactus. I don't want to deal with both a frog rain and insanity at the same time. And then decide to head over to the swamp, tons of frogs versus swamp creatures can be pretty funny, but soon enough the frog rain has stopped, so I head back to base. I use the shadow manipulator to learn how to refine the dark petals into shadow fuel and just burn the extra one left over. Sanity is low enough that I have to chase off a shadow hand and then I cook up a few more cactus to boost my brain back to full. As morning of day 49 arrives, I put a berry bait in the fence, then pick the produce and gank the gobblers. Time to start mass producing meatballs for bundling wrap storage. Freshness isn't much of an issue as foods don't spoil while they're wrapped, but to maximize my freshness buffer, I go ahead and cook some stale berries for a second round of meatballs. I'm a bit low on meats though, so I head up to the spider force to get more monster meat, which also puts me close enough to the bee boxes that they should be pretty productive. There's several level 3 nests up here now, so no shortage of spiders to kill, which I keep doing as dusk arrives, ensuring a steady supply of the little buggers. And if you watch my mini map, you'll see that two of the nests just popped up into spider queens. I don't feel like dealing with them right now though, so I head back to base and yep, the bee boxes are looking good. Back at base, I kill a few mole worms while putting stuff away. During the night I craft an extra pair of infroggles as my original pair was getting kind of low and then it's day 50. I need a new ham bat so off to the forest with 4 monster meat I go to make a were pig, then I head up to the spider queens to thin them out a bit. They're currently aggroed on a pig so it's really easy to take out the spiders and then I start working on the first queen. She goes down pretty fast on my tentacle spike and then I start working on the second one and before long the forest is looking quite a bit safer for the locals. I don't have room for all the loot, so I use the healing lands and then decide to have a little bit of fun with the spiders. Wearing a spider hat makes nearby spiders your followers, which also lets you make them fight each other and even take down Ness. Ah, bummer, Ness turned into a spider queen who will see through the clever disguise. And as my sanity was getting low, I decided to head back to base anyways. Uh oh, looks like the lure plant has taken up residence by my grass and twig farm. Ugh, and my pet koalafin is out of his area again. At base, I go ahead and make a couple of taffy to boost my sanity. While they cook, I head up to take out the lure plant and then eat a taffy. Once dawn arrives, it's time to make my ice fling a for the summer base and then chase Mr. Koalafin up to his corner again. Hmm, should we name this guy? Let me know down in the comments if you have any name ideas and I'll announce it in the next episode. Next, I get another round of meatballs cooking in the crock pots. All the meatballs are going to go into a bundling wrap. I also make a batch of honey poultices and then head over to my bee boxes which are now brimming with honey. Keeping away from the defending killer bees is a bit annoying, but with 6 honey per box, I soon have quite the supply built up. At long last, it's time to load up a bundled supply. This is going to be a summertime and maybe future cave exploration care package complete with a fresh ham bat, lots of honey, meatballs, and honey poultices. At some point I'll also likely make a goggle package with pigskin, gold, stone, and maybe gears, but that can wait until later. I'm a bit low on reeds though, so I head up the road to gather more, which have all regrown since the last time I was up there. Uh oh, looks like the pig village gets to deal with the spider queen. Sorry boys, I'm already full on spider hats. Down the road the spider queen near my base is still roaming around, I decide to leave her so she can just plant herself as a new nest. I tinker around base for a little bit, then decide to place my lure plant off to the side near the coast. There's more flotsam in the cove, so I go fishing again for a bit, but I'm not terribly impressed with any of the catches. Like the sextant, the toy boat only trades to the pig king for 2 gold, but Wally the parrot will give 2 blue gems for it, so that's an option. But I decide to just go to the pig king anyways and get there a little bit before morning and wait for him to wake up. The 3 trinkets net me 8 gold and then I warp back to base. With just a few days of spring left, but it's looking like we're stuck at 0 for 2 on getting any seasonal giants, so let's call it a day and see what summer brings us in the next episode. Cheers!